Hey, this is René. Welcome back for another video. Today, I'm joined by Johannes, who will ask me nine questions starting now. What kind of realistic annual returns can a trading bot achieve? Uh, that's a, actually a question that I also get very often from the community. And I, I cannot really give the perfect answer to this because the percentage return per year is very is highly dependent on the risk that you want to take. Because let me give you one example. Like if you just, or maybe a, a real, realistic example from the practice, like all of you guys probably did a backtest already. And you will, you will pretty quickly realize that if you do a backtest over, let's say, one year and you trade with one lot, then you might make like 10%. And then if you do the exact same backtest and you trade with two lots, you will make 20%. So as you can see, this is not, it is, it is really not like you can say you, you make five or 10% per year because, it, because if you just double the risk, you can expect the double outcome pretty much. So this is why it is not that easy to give you one fixed number and it, it really depends on your risk. But as a rule, rule of thumb, I would say like if you risk a drawdown of 10%, then you should aim for a return that is around 10%. Because if you risk 10% and you're just aiming for 5%, something is off in the equation. What is the biggest misconception people have about automated trading? Uh, I think one thought that many people have is that automated trading programs are a safe way of making constant money. Because if you really look at it, the automation of trading strategies is, is not really a trading strategy itself. It's just ta taking an existing strategy and then benefiting from the benefits that automated trading brings. Like you do not have to execute the strategy yourself. You do not have to sit in front of the PC all the time. You do not have the emotional stress. But the strategy stays the same. So it's not like you can make constant profit safely only because you automated the trading strategy. That's not really how it works. Like automated bots bring the same ups and downs as normal or as any strategy. And it's completely normal to have drawdown periods that can be as long as multiple weeks or even months. In my back test and from my experience also from live trading, it is not rare that you will see a strategy that performs great in one or two months and then has a more or less break-even period or slightly negative period for the next two or three months. This is not a problem. I think it is important that after the course of multiple, multiple months, like really many months or years, you have to be in profit. But many people think um, automated trading programs have to make profit every single day, every single week. And This is just not correct. How long would it take for a beginner to build their first profitable EA? Um, okay, I mean, like building a profitable EA is an interesting question because, I mean, you never really know if it will be profitable. I mean, you can do a lot of testing, but uh, profits are never guaranteed. So let me, let me take this a little bit out of the question because... Uh, Profits are not guaranteed, I would say. But let's let's maybe uh, think about it as how much time does a beginner need to get the first bot up and running. And this really depends on, it mainly depends on the person itself and the effort he or she is uh, willing to make. Because you can really learn programming in a matter of days or weeks if you are really taking it serious and if you are investing a lot of time. Also, it's of course super beneficial if you work with a structured course, like also you can work with my programming course and of course it will speed up the process if you have everything in the right order and you do not have to find different tutorials on let's say YouTube. But it's still, it mainly depends on like the time and effort you can invest into this programming process like someone who has a family who is working full time and who can learn for one or two hours per week will take of course much longer than someone who is maybe unemployed at the moment or who is a student who has a lot of time and who can invest five hours per day he might be able to pick up programming in a few weeks and write easy programs 
um, on his own in a few weeks. But someone who is work, working full time, doing it with one or two hours per week, he, he, he will really take multiple months. And it makes no sense to say that everyone can learn it in a few days because that's, that's, not, really, that's not really true. But after all, I would say everyone can learn it. And this is, I think, the most important message because even if it might take some more time, what I always like to say is that the good thing about programming and learning how to code is you, you really only get better. It's not like trading where you have ups and downs, but with programming, the more time you invest, the better you will get. The more practice you have, the better you will get. And this is the, the nice thing because you can guarantee success here while you cannot really guarantee it with trading, of course. But um, yeah, programming, it depends on the person, but I would say if you are consistent, you can definitely learn it in a few weeks or months. Which programming languages and platforms are the best for developing Forex trading bots and why? I think this always depends on what you want to do. Like, for example, I'm working a lot with the MetaTrader 5 and the programming language MQL5 pretty much comes with it. And I use the platform because I want to trade Forex and CFD products. And the MetaTrader 5 is pretty much the most common platform when it comes to these products. But if you, for example, want to trade futures, then the MetaTrader 5 is maybe not perfect for you. Or let me give you another example. If you want to trade stocks and you maybe want to trade like, like physical stocks and you want to trade with interactive brokers as a broker, you cannot really use the MetaTrader 5 or you would have to create some kind of bridge. But in this case, it would be better to use the Trader Workstation API that Interactive Brokers provides. And then you want to code with Python or Java, for example, or any of the APIs they provide. So the, the question is really what you want to trade and what platform you want to use. Another example is TradingView, which uses, I think, PineScript. So um, yeah, you will have to ask yourself what platform do I want to use for my trading and then you pretty much have to use the um, coding language that is used for this platform. Also, like it also depends on the topics or the, the, the tools that you need for your coding. For example, if you want to implement a lot of AI machine learning stuff, then of course you want to work with Python, Python because they have the Uh, a lot of um, uh, libraries already available, but if you want to use, um, uh, if you don't want to focus so much on AI and machine learning, then you can use pretty much any other coding language. So it depends on the, the goal you want to achieve, and then you can work yourself back pretty much to the, to the platform and to the, to the tools that you need for this. Are you using artificial intelligence for your trading programs? Uh, I actually do not really use artificial intelligence. This is why I also um, create all of my bots pretty much only with MQL5 and I don't use Python at all. I had some experiments with machine learning when I coded a bot also for the MetaTrader 5 because the MQL5 framework has one or two um, mathematical algorithms that also use machine learning, but I did not find any benefit in doing so. And from my experience, most of the programs that use AI and machine learning, they mainly, mainly use it for marketing purposes and not really because it is like the holy grail or the secret source of um, EA trading. How do you optimize and backtest strategies to ensure profitability and robustness? Ensuring profitability and robustness is um, not so easy, but I mean, I'm trying my best. And what I like to do is I, I, I really just I test a lot. And this is um, what I can also recommend. Like you should do, first of all, when you start developing a new strategy, I like to start with a visualized backtest first to see if there are any errors with the code or if the strategy itself is working fine and if it is secure. And once I figured this out, then of course I write code that is efficient for strategy testing and, um, and optimization. And then I really just use the optimizer of the MetaTrader 5. I try to work with different symbols, different settings, and then I um, yeah, try different combinations for the inputs and um, yeah, try to have a look at the outcome of the optimization then which is done on the VPS, of course. So you can really let the VPS work for multiple hours or even days. And then I have a look at the outcome and I try to find the settings that, in my opinion, are the most stable ones uh, in the future. And this is always a, 
a, a guess pretty much. So we can never be sure if the settings that worked in the past, if they will also work in the future, but we can have a look at it and think about it logically. And if I believe that the strategy itself is logical and the settings are not over-optimized, then these are pretty much the settings that I then use for live, live accounts. And of course, in the beginning phase, when I start to use a new strategy in a live account, I really observe it carefully. And I also like to compare the first live trading results with the backtesting results for the same period frequently to figure out if the live trading results mirror the performance in the tester. And there, if there's a big gap, then of course you have to reevaluate everything. But if there's no real gap um, between the live trading results and the testing results, then I really like to test it just for a longer period, like multiple months and see how it goes. What is the biggest technical challenge in developing a Forex trading bot? I think it like, it really depends on the strategy because most bots that are based on indicators or really a good rule set that is objective and that you can write down. If you have such a rule set, then it's usually not a problem to code the strategy. Um, if you have the coding knowledge, of course. If you are an absolute beginner, you will struggle here and there and you will have to look up different things. But if you are really an advanced programmer, you can write down pretty much everything very quickly if you have a good rule set. But the main problems often come with uh, strategies that have a factor or that that have many subjective aspects like for example um, uh, market structure programs or strategies that work with highs and lows or support and resistance zones they are usually not easy to code because most of the times these strategies need the interpretation of a human trader and um, or most of the times the, the human trader cannot really define what exactly he's looking for if he um, searches for highs and lows or supporting resistance zones. So this is uh, often the, the biggest difficulty working with programs like this that have a huge um, subjective uh, interpretation factor. What common mistakes do you see other developers or traders are making with trading bots? Um, I would say that some developers or uh, coders who try to develop strategies are thinking too complex and they always want to find strategies that are super fancy, super complex. And in my opinion, this is not really necessary. And most of the time, or for me and from my experience with a lot of live trading, the easier programs, the easier strategies really work best in the long term. Okay, last question. For someone starting out, should they focus on coding, on strategy or something else? Um, actually, if you ask me, I would say yes, you should focus on coding because I mean, what else should you focus on? If, you, if, you, if you're just starting uh, with uh, your trading journey, pretty much, it is, I think, a bad idea to really jump into live trading already with strategies that you never really backtested. And you can burn your money so quickly if you trade strategies that you never backtested. And you will also have a lot of problems with uh, like the, the mental stress that comes with trading um, when you trade strategies that you never backtested. <laughs> like if you enter the first drawdown, you will question your whole process pretty much. And if you start with coding instead of trading immediately, this will give you a lot of confidence because then you can really take the strategy that you want to trade anyways and you can code it and you can backtest it for a very long time in the strategy tester first before then using it in a live account. And then if the first drawdown comes and you are seeing a drawdown of some weeks, you can say, or you can stay confident and say that, okay, I've seen this before in the back test. This is completely normal. I did not risk too much and I'm still um, yeah, confident that the strategy can recover and make profits in the future. So I would always recommend to go and uh, learn how to code, automate strategies first, because it really makes the whole trading process easier afterwards. Okay, so these were the questions already. Thanks, uh, Johannes, for assisting me in this video. And I hope you guys like this, um, like the questions and the answers. And yeah, as always, let me know what you think in the comments below. And I will see you next time. Have a good time. Good trades. Bye-bye.